full of low bank charges, but only for a few services you use. No monthly ledger fees or minimum balance required. <laughs> This is an announcement to all MTN Mobile Money customers. In a continuous effort to offer quality service and improve network to customers, MTN is carrying out maintenance works on the mobile money system. During this time, customers will experience intermittent interruptions or no access at all to the mobile money service. MTN will keep you informed as soon as the upgrade is completed and service restored. Any inconvenience this may cause is regretted. Radio One. Spectrum on Radio One F90. Spectrum wants to hear your views. You can SMS at any time during the show. Type Spectrum, leave a space, type in your contribution and name, then send it to 7197. Your views, our interviews on Spectrum, Radio 1 F. Hello, everyone. Welcome. You tuned into Spectrum on Radio 1. My name is Edmond Chizito, your host. On Spectrum tonight, <clears throat> what should Parliament do with the marriage and divorce bill, taking into account the outcomes from the ongoing consultations by members of Parliament? The feedback from many MPs who have been seeking views from the public on the marriage and divorce bill indicates that Ugandans do not this, need this bill. Those that have spoken to the media recently indicate that the masses want Parliament to engage in other serious issues, especially those that touch on poverty, health care, and agriculture. In many areas, Ugandans fear that if this bill is passed, it will erode the institution of marriage and the family at large. Some parents also fear that this bill will block the chances of their children getting married. Today, there was a fracas in Chadondo East when a sharp disagreement emerged over the bill as area MP Ibrahim Semjungande consulted his people. Reflecting on the same bill, religious leaders have expressed concern on clauses that support divorce, marital rape, and cohabitation, while those who cherish, cherish culture say that MPs should not tamper with bride price. Proponents of the bill insist that it is essential since it seeks to strengthen the institution of marriage and also protect partners. So as we, ref as we reflect on the views being given to the MPs, we ask, should this bill that has been in the pipeline for over 47 years be stayed? Also, are the proponents of this proposed law open to the proposal of carrying out further amendments as a way of breaking the standoff? How about a proposal to have a referendum on this bill so that you guys can decide the way for our guests tonight? Honorable Sheila Kamara Mishambi, chairman of the Uganda Women's Network, we want it. Also, a former member of parliament in the East African Legislative Assembly. You're most welcome, Honorable Sheila. Thank you, we're also joined by Pastor Martin Semper, founder of the Makere Community Church and senior pastor there as well. You're most welcome, Honorable. You uh, forgot Pastor Martin Semper. You forgot to say Chief Anti Gay. I'm just so glad to be here with you. Pastor Edmund. Martin, Chief Anti Gay. <laughs> Pastor, <laughs> Matt, what's the general public's view regarding this bill? I think that there's an outrage. There's an outrage, and what has happened over the last two weeks, when I look really in the, all the media, you, you look at Monitor, you look at Bukebe, you look at Vision, you see that the nation is in outrage. There are people who are so annoyed about the ideas uh, post put forward in this bill. I don't think I've seen more participation of a population on an issue like this. I can't remember something else. But the core axis of democracy is involvement, contestation, and participation. So we can't say democracy is at work. What is happening, though, is that there is a rude shock for some of the backers of the bill who thought that it would be an easier route to bring it forward. Uh, and some of the arguments and the packaging, I think that is being done is not being helpful. So my own observation is as we approach Easter, this bill must suffer death just like Jesus Christ, be buried for three days, but for in my case three, three months, and then resurrect with new life. Because at this current stage, the whole Jerusalem of Uganda is fighting, crucify it, crucify it. And my sister, she like, is here. I think she's very aware. But uh, I don't want only to say that the, the, what it is attempting to do is no 
much irrelevant. We do have a marital problem in the country. We do have an institution of marriage that has been neglected for more than 20, 30 years. We have spent a lot of effort on investment, a lot of effort on capitalistic projects, but there's been little or no effort in strengthening the institution of marriage. We should have had a marriage investment authority 20 years ago. We should have had a marriage extension workers like NEDS 20 years ago. And so what you are seeing now is a failure of attention. And I think as the women are coming in to try and bring a solution, part of the problem is that they are trying to resolve a, a, a genuine issue. In, in yes. It is not the women trying to create a solution. It is the government of Uganda. Uh, 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 quite that impression. Uh, I so that we do not uh, confuse the government with the women. Okay. I spent a few hours with FIDA, with women of FIDA, last week in the office of uh, Dr. Serwada. And the women lawyers of FIDA told me that originally they are the, one, they are the ones who are at the heart of bringing this issue up. I told them I'm also at the bottom of the anti sodomy bill. They also say, just as you are, we are also at the heart of this issue. But I, 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 I'm sure this was presented as a government bill. Just in summary, we have a, a marriage issue. We need to strengthen marriages in the country. I just think we we need to cre to be more creative and, and bring more opinions into the idea and consult widely so that we have a much robust bill or act. And if you are saying it is taken 40 years, it is trying to change a culture that is 4,000 years. So saying that you've spent 40 years to come up with a bill that is who is ambitious of changing the history of Buganda, Busoga, Bunoro, Chwezi, Ankure, the way we do marriage, which has taken 4,000 years. 40 years is very small. Even if it takes 400 years to consult so we get it right. That is what I'm saying. And you say there should be death and then resurrection. This boy should die and resurrect and suffer death for at least three days. And as Jesus said, unless this grain of bill dies and suffer, then it will not arise. <laughs> and you know that after resurrection, there's no death after. Talk to us about you this. You know, it's amazing when you are here with the pastor. And pastors have their ideocracies. <laughs> so when you are here to, to debate with Pastor Semper, it is really amazing. One, he's talking about the tradition of, is of just Uganda. Is it any other pastor? It's really? Pastor Semper. He's another, he has class. this Judaism. Eh? Promoting Judaism in the Uganda culture. Why don't we go traditional and have the traditional religion? We so much acclaim that these traditions are good for the women of Uganda. And then he's taking, he's saying the Jerusalem, I like his, you know the analogies he's giving. The Jerusalem of Uganda is crying out, crucify, who is the Jerusalem? These are the Pharisees, the criminals. <laughs> Crucify him. We want Barnabas. We want Barnabas. So you can see, we are living with a lot of hypocrisies. These things are happening in our society, and we're simply shelving. We are trying to say, oh, you know, these women, some of you, this bill is being advocated by women, middle class women, elitist women. No, this bill is being advocated for, pushed for, and presented in our parliament by the government of the Republic of Uganda. The cabinet, which presented this bill by the Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs brought it from cabinet. It was put on the order paper by courtesy of the Prime Minister of Uganda who is in charge of the government business, business, government business, who chairs the cabinet. It is the President of the Republic of Uganda, His Excellency Yoweri Kaguta Museveni. So why do the women come in? The government is simply trying to actualize what is in the constitution, that this government will will ensure that the institution of the family and marriage is duly protected by putting in place appropriate laws that will give women equal rights, that is Article 31. If we, anybody has bothered to read our constitution, including our parliamentarian, Article 31 says that at the beginning of the marriage, during that marriage, and at the dissolution of that marriage. So it is expected, even in our constitution, that there will be a marriage, it will be sustained, it could get up 
its ups and downs, and it could be dissolved. It is in the constitution. So what the government is actually doing is constitutional. And then there is the, what is referred to as the public view. Why don't we say that the men's view, those men who are living hypocritical lives, we actually want to name and shame some of them. They are married in church. They always appear at big functions as the duly married men with these miserable wives sometimes even accompanying them. Oh, they don't even smile. The wives hardly smile and then they are cohabiting somewhere, renting apartments for some cohabitees. And the cohabitees also, unfortunately, what pains us most is that we have had some of our women yes. and sisters really testifying. They call themselves, you know my husband, eh, when they are referring, Omani Wang. But legally, those are not their husbands. Eh? But for them, they duly know that these are their husbands. And we, why are the women interested in this bill? Yeah. I wanted to just know that they are. Martin, I gave you a time. Martin, I gave you a time. I want to really make your statement. The, why are the women so much interested? The main sufferers, actually, we should all agree. Our pastors, our priests, and our reverends are running away from one fact. They marry us off. We go to church and get married. Yes. But they never follow us. And they give us some training or some... Uh, but when they come counseling in the home, you think they have come for tea? No. They never do the counseling beyond what the happened. The marriage. The beyond the wedding. Absolutely. And even you, because our traditions have kind of faded out, okay, the origin, what tradition? I would go with tradition if my aunties okay, mm. were still doing their job mm. of really counseling. And the uncles of our spouses are also doing their job of counseling the men. But we are missing out on that. And then we are also seeing, because they are saying, you are most interested in protecting the women. No. I have sons and daughters. I want to protect my sons. I want to jump in over there. Let, let, me, let, let me step in. We have in. waves of murderers. Yes. Mm. Eh? Women are resorting to kill men. Married it's women. Among. Yes. And even married men are resorting to slaughter women and their explain children. Explain that for us a little bit. Why, how do you explain that? The why, of that why, am I, uh, why am I coming to that? Matter. You see, when you come in a marriage, in the church, when you go and say, they say you know, never my husband is doing this and I'm really psychologically tortured and I'm really not. They say persevere. They say, please, you Until, swear. Till death do you till death do depart. So you prepare to plan that death. I, I, I would like to step in. I'd like to step in over here, my sister. First of all, uh, there is a perception that men are the problem. And I think this women is... Women are equally the problem. This That's is, what the this bill is, says, spouses. This is they never talk about women. I'd like to say that men are not the problem. And sometimes when you look at some of these bills hmm, and laws that are backed by women, sometimes they are so harsh. I'd like to remind us of the law against defilement, which has increased the incarceration of men. That today in our prisons, this harsh law of defilement has meant that even a boy, when he has relations with an older girl, he, 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 so many are imprisoned. The law is extremely harsh. And uh, I, I think what happens is sometimes when a man has No, I want to divorce. start go back. When you come and look at a, an, a solution, uh, for example, marital rape, which I've had my, my sister Miriam Matembe talk about. We'll talk about the marital rape. Marital rape. <coughs> what about the marital rape? But the perception of the image of men is seen as if men are brutes, are beasts. Okay. But men mm -hmm. are actually mm -hmm. men are actually brothers, sons, grandparents. Friends, neighbors. First, I'll, I'll, I'll interrupt you a little bit. We'll get, we'll, we'll, we'll get to a little bit. What's your analysis very briefly? Do you think this bill is going to be passed? Very I think Honorable Shula. this bill, if there was really objective depend, uh, debate on it, yes. whereby all the churches, they look at all our scenarios, because nobody wants to listen to the women. Until we tell you that your own daughter will suffer. But that is such a when it comes yeah, to that, is, that is when people will think about it. Because they are looking at women as white. No, right. no, no. I want to stop in there. Yes. yes. Martin, let, 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 let me let conclude. Honorable Shira. We want to hear the women. We can even share. The women. Mm. Each time women st sit up to talk. Yes. I, the other day I was challenged. Somebody was saying, Sheila, produce your husband. And I said, yes. He's Actually, someone. we can go and get him. Mr. Michel. Where, Major Michel. Uh, where he was buried. Then I I can Delight. move along with him. Right. So there's the kind of thinking that for us as women, we are out to destroy the institution of a family. I grew up in a family. I'm protecting my family up to now. And I 
really would wish my sons and daughters mm. to get into a family institution. Right. And I will stand for the family uh, and protecting uh, the values of the family. I, we both oh, are so much. Yes. Yes. Let's get something. What, what in your view? Can you describe for us the ideal law? The ideal law. Is? First of all, we must change. A, we must make a, a difference. The, the name should not be marriage and divorce. The name, the name should, should, should be changed. Uh, uh, and, and I want to say it needs to be changed to the, the Marriage and Family Protection Act. Yes. Uh, second, Marriage and Family Protection Act. Yeah. It, it needs and to, to, a family. It needs to reflect uh, the Christian views on marriage. Why uh, Christian? And this why, is a because, secular... No, no. When the Muslims ask that they don't want to be a part of this thing, the Muslims were given assurance that this law will not apply to them, but will only apply to Christians, Baha'i, Hindus, and cultures. So we know and that this law, and civil, this law is specifically for Christians and others. Now, for us, we are saying, as Christian leaders, that it must have the reflection. For example, my sister is talking about that equality. It is okay we are equal, but in Christian marriage, the husband is the head. So while we are equal before God and the law, and we have the different roles. We have different roles, and in the husband, the husband is the head of the wife and the head of the home. And the that that the must be specifically put there. So we need to get our theologians from Chitterede, from Nkozi, from from UCU Mukono for long seminars to deliberate. Number three, there is an ideological de uh, lacking, creativity lacking in this bill. Yes. I told you we need something like a marriage investment authority in this country, <laughs> which is going to strengthen because marriage people are investors. And what my sister and others are doing, they are trying to come up with a marriage investment bill. But the way they are going about it is annoying so many people. Number three, we need, if this is a bill that is going to strengthen the problems of marriage. I like it, but you will explain for us yeah, the annoying bit. We need, we need yeah. a survey. We need a survey. I think oh, that's the problem. My sister talked about spousal mothers. Yes. But she did not elucidate to you why those spousal mothers are in the country. I want to tell you that. No, I let me bring you up to speed. Yes, sir. You see, the survey these people are going on is a 1960 survey. This man, the Kalima. Yes. Yes. Now, I want to bring you up to speed. Yes. About four years ago. Two feminists, Sylvia Tamari yes. and Dora Biamukama, got went to constitutional court and litigated the penal code on the section of the law against adultery. Yes. When the law against adultery was knocked out because uh, supposedly it was gender imbalanced, it made Uganda a lawless country when it comes to marital issues of adultery. From that time onwards, there has been a 1,000% escalation of marital to violence because whenever there is any issue of adultery, there is no recourse of law that I'm going to take this issue to the police. Give us the substance of that. that the substance is our country right now does not have a law against adultery. We are a lawless nation. That is why people run over each other at the gate. That is why women shoot husbands and they pour acid on private parts, stick things in their behind. And in this particular law, there is no section against adultery because for them it is not a modern thing. When I read the brief of Mifumi, Mifumi is a feminist organization which has been at the front line of knocking out bride price and dowry. Okay? It even went to court. Now, they have been at the front line of pushing this bill, so I've been studying them for the so last few years. Yes, one yes. of the major yes. things, and I've followed them. Who funds them? What are their briefs? And I've watched and read their briefs, each one of them. And one of the major things is is they say they want to make our marriages to be at par with European and Western nations and to subscribe to the European rules such as the Convention for the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women, said Dawa. So this law is not driving to create an original African marriage. It is seeking to make our marriages like European marriages. Right. Okay. So there is a problem, we agree. There is a need for solution, but we are photocopying the solution from Europe, America, Canada, whose marriages have failed and they are bringing us here. Ask yourself a simple question. UK, yes. why 
would the United Kingdom put so much money in this bill when their marriages are failing? Their Prime Minister told us the other day, Sodome is going to make, Sodome marriages are going to make UK stronger. This is the same people fighting the anti-homosexuality bill. Now they are putting money in the marriage to divorce bill. Me, I call it the marriage to divorce bill. Marriage to divorce bill. Marriage to divorce bill. To divorce bill. Why would America, these are the champions of Sodome, why would Canada, Belgium, Sweden, I want to tell you the common on the ground people know this bill, unfortunately our women are being duped they think they are on a bill which is going to make marriages better but I'm telling you, this is going to make marriages worse, so that people lose hope and they start going for sodomy, if a woman finds that she has a problem with her marriage, she will go with another man, another she? woman I'm sorry, another woman, then it will create a, a, a fertile environment, for what? for all these perversions, so I say this bill must suffer death, be buried for at least three months, and then experience resurrection. Having gone through resurrection, it will get the new power of All the right. Holy Spirit. Honorable Sheila, before we go for the break, talk to us about uh, what you think, whether you think this law should be split. You, you know, for me, I, I, would do, I, I wouldn't want to really draw so much on uh, a debate that is clearly informed or when we are debating from a point of ignorance. Because we are talking about the current, yet this bill, it was started actually by women in the church, YWCA and Mother's Union in 1957. That's, those are the people that demanded for this bill. When marriages were actually at a, a what? And when you say that we are basing on a report of the Kalema report, mm. no. The bill is backed by a study, a research, thoroughly. They went all over the country. When? By the Uganda Law Reform Commission. When, it, yes? it is recently, 2009, when they were presenting this, because when they presented the bill in the seventh parliament, it was from the floor of parliament. They told the Law Reform Commission, go and get more views. That's when they split the bill. 2008, they were out in the field. 2009, they come out with a refined bill and they split it. Because the church was saying, the Muslims were saying, we want a law for us, so we want to so take the Kadi courts. Yes. And so, the Law Reform Commission presented a detailed research report, which is backing the 2009 bill. All right. So we should not say that this is a bill which has no basis. But sure, well, I I you can see the response which I can well, well, answer that question. Let's take a break right now. We'll be back and then we'll be able to answer that question. Excuse me, what is this 300 shillings on my bill for? That is for the tented candle of madame. And this 100 shillings? That is for the air conditioning. And this 200 shillings? For the blue walls, ma'am. I can't believe this. Why pay for what you don't use or ask for? That's why we at Standard Chartered are introducing the Easy Go account, the first current account of its kind that gives you complete control of your banking charges. For more details, visit a Standard Chartered branch or call 0414-340077. Would you like to leave me a tip, please? So I'm chilling at home with my crew. The boys are waiting to watch the game on the telly, but the chicks want to go to the beach. So how do we play it? A glance across the room. Eye contact is made. A plan is hatched. Pete will get some sand. Lots of it. Jeff will take care of the deco. Tim, the entertainment. And I, the clubs. And so we bring the beach to the apartment. If we can't go to the beach, we bring the beach to us. It's just how we do. It's not about where you're at. It's the difference you bring. Get a fresh take on things. Club is brewed longer for easier drinking. Brewed slower for great taste. Club, tastefully different. Not for sale to persons under the age of 18. Communications Commission invites entries for the third ASIA Awards scheduled for June the 7th, 2013. Visit www.ucc.co.ug slash awards for information on the categories and criteria. Deadline for entries is April the 30th, 2013. ASIA, ICT Innovation for National Development. Radio 1 FM 90.
Welcome back on Spectrum tonight. What should Parliament do with the marriage and divorce bill, taking into account the outcomes from the ongoing consultations by members of Parliament? Our guests tonight, Honorable Sheila Kamara Mishambi, Chairman of uh, she's the Chairman of the Uganda Chairperson, pardon me, Chairperson of the Uganda Women's Network or WOMENET, uh, also former Member of Parliament in the South African Legislative Assembly, Pastor Martin Semba, the one and only, founder of the Macario Community Church and Family Policy Center. Family Policy Center. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to call in and contribute to this. Uh, discussion tonight. Honorable Shilaj, do you think this law should be split? One for Christians, one for Mohammedans, one for the Northerners who apparently enjoy marital rape? Again, we are going and to... And then people say she enjoys it very I, much. I, 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 by the way, that is absurd. Again, we are going to idiocracies. You see, one of the things is that uh, separating this bill for Christians, then let's separate all laws for Christians, Muslims, Hindus, and what. Well. Uganda is a secular state. More so, I think, uh, Pastor Semper said we should get these theologians from everywhere. Let these theologians go and stand in their constituencies, be elected as our parliamentarians, and they go and legislate. Since when did uh, these theologians become legislators to decide on the law? Where were they when they were debating the oil debate? Where were they when they were debating uh, imposing taxes on Ugandans? Where have they been eh? when the various laws, like even the bill on uh, our freedom to associate, where have these theologians been? Why aren't we seeing them? But why are they so passionate about this law? Is it because it is oppressive to some people? And for me, I'm saying to some people because even there are some women who are very oppressive to yeah, weaker right. men, right. Eh? especially when the man is not as well endowed or property. They have kicked men out of homes. Only these men are out in the court. And yes. this law is out to protect but the institution of weaker. marriage and the weaker one in that marriage right. because it could be a man or a woman and then legislating for Catholics uh, or Christians because I know even the Christians we say no we want the Catholics, the real Catholics, the real Catholics -time Catholics. and the part-time Catholics and the Protestants we want separate laws then what if now when I'm going to get married as a woman or a man I'd say I want a civil marriage and the other one says no I want a Catholic yes. so this thing the the law to me is very optional because because it provides for everything. Actually, in that law, it is very clear. The, the Christian marriage will be solemnized in such a manner. Yes. Then it will have the following conditions. The Hindu marriage will be solemnized in such a manner, it will have the following conditions. So, there are simply different versions of the laws within the same, within the same law. May I jump in over here? So, I don't see. And then when it comes to divorce, which people keep on saying, oh, why are they talking about the divorce? Problem. But we are aware that there is a divorce law in this country. And then these churches are so proud. These are our marriages. Who told them they are their marriages? I got married in church. And immediately after the marriage, it was only recognized by after I registered it with the state. These are state marriages. And actually, it is the state which registers these so-called churches. And give them permission. Yeah? To uh, and give them permission to marry us. They should fight if they are really people of God. Mm. Yeah? Let what is Caesar's remain with Caesar. No. They should fight the no. This is a kind of saying I we have been, been registered by the state, yes. but when the state decides to annul the marriage we conducted, then we, we are not accepting it. But the marriage is for the state. Uh, uh, hold, uh, pa Pastor Martin, I would like you to give us, I would like us to break down some of these things. See, the contentious issue, things, things to do with cohabitation, bride price. Give us your thoughts on those two to begin with. It's my thought that uh, we all agree that we have a problem and a solution we are trying to come up with. But uh, I think the problem is how we can solve the problem. The, that, that's the problem. Yes. Um, and I think what is needed in a democratic society is when people are stakeholders, they must be given a chance. If you're talking about my district, my constituency, if the oil is from my region, I am a stakeholder. So the church is a natural stakeholder in the issue of family and marriage when it comes to that whole area. And we must be given space. We must. We are not like other people. We must be given space to speak and to teach. Uh, now, coming up to critical issues that need to be within the bill. Let's cohabitation, right? Cohabitation. Uh, I think the whole idea of, of legislating cohabitation is a bad idea. I am at Makere University where some students come in and there's a Lumumbist and he decides to cohabit with a, a girl from Africa and maybe they're doing architecture for four years so they 
shack together. They, this bill is suggesting that at the end of their study of four years, they will go get both a certificate of their education and a marriage certificate. Mm -hmm. As long as maybe they've been together five years or if they've had a child. Information. Can okay. I get information? Now, now, the the living, living of together. Yes. Hey, look, the living of together. Let's say it takes ten years. Look, let's let's see. For, let's call the teacher. Is not yes. in this bill. Let, let it's me, not recommended. No, we, they have to agree to take it out. out of it. No, no it's not in. Uh -uh, no. It is only applies in terms of property. Uh, it, it comes in, in property issues. Uh, yeah, but it's but not a recognized marriage because it has no solemnization. It has no conditions. So it is not recognized. And it is nowhere in that bill that after you've cohabited, and we've been telling our women, actually... Uh, allow me to good. finish. I, I think that the whole idea of legalizing and giving benefits which are due to married people because some people have been living together is creating, for is creating a state that at the end of your course at the university you will have to be legally married, married according to that particular cohabitation okay, time cuts as well. let's talk about bride price bride, bride, bride price, price. So, should there be a price for the bride I actually think that there is a, this is a, a, a love hate relationship they need to come up with a mutual agreement where there is acceptable amounts, the quality is accepted, but a, a give and take. Uh, I am a pastor. I encourage people to abstain from sex until marriage, and, and many of my people do, and they get to married right after university. The problem I have found is when some of the parents are greedy, and they ask for 20 cows, they ask for 40 cows, and these guys are just beginning out. So what's the ideal? The ideal, I think we need to have a close. So can well, both, yeah, yeah, both of them can have a mutual agreement of something manageable that these two can so come up sides. with. And I think that we agree with my sisters on that. The idea of returning those those goods is not a good idea. I, I think that's something that's unacceptable. Uh, I'd like to move forward when they talk about marital rape and conjugal rights. Yeah, let's talk about marital rape. And, and essentially what this does is, by implication, this section 114 creates a loophole that sex without consent is rape it has and it's a crime within certain within certain conditions for example one of the conditions if a woman the health is yeah, yeah. psychological no, no listen to let's me talk, talk about the health no conditions. i would like to come to the issue well, let me, let me, let me forget you to battle let's hear you sort of chill about bride price and court. you've spoken about crime. let's talk yeah. briefly, briefly about bride price bride, what should we bride, bride about price bride in the law in the proposed bill it is clear that bride price these will be married gifts. Why was it branded as marriage gifts? It's because in certain communities in our country, you know, this country to legislate for this country, it is very, very difficult. Yeah. We have Many 56 tribes. or 60 kind of nation states yes. within this small Uganda. So, bread price in certain areas that people would pay and after you separate, you have to should you separate, a there is a refund. If you don't, they will attack your community, set, your grass set all the right. grass thatched houses, mm -hmm. and meanwhile the people who ate the bread price are already dead and gone, eh? mm -hmm. then there is complete anarchy. Eh? So we proposed that let this be gifts, mm -hmm. so that in case I give you a gift, I can't demand for its return. Mm -hmm. And the, really that is, if we, if we agree on that, mm -hmm. for us we are not saying bread price, you are well fit. If those people who are willing to have bread price, they can have it, but the demand for the return of that bread price. When this woman has had so many children... I, I agree with you. I, I, I think we're together. Outside. You can see the areas yes, that me and Sheila are together. <laughs> right. And you see, I, I, I do the deal with these issues. But this area of marital rape, a, a certain story is is you are creating a law or a, a law that sex without consent no. is rape. And this no. is this is what no. is modern no. and no. trendy in many Europeans and other legal backgrounds. Let me yes. finish. In 1985, this same law was passed in Australia. That is not no, 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 no. The, implica the implication of this law is such that if you have sex without the consent of your spouse in certain conditions, one of those, if it, if they are worried that it will cause 
psychological stress, okay, yes. uh, or harm, and if you have sex with them, you cause, you, you commit a crime. And I want to bring you an example. In 1985, this law was passed in Australia. This is the, really the expansion of sexual assault laws, so that sex without consent. Now, first of all, how do you define consent? Do you give an invoice? Is it a vocal? Do you have a stamp? Okay. Do you have uh, a tender? Look, you are beginning to bring the state into the bedroom of lovers and you are creating a very hostile situation. Secondly, because you can't define consent and it has not been defined. I have this bill. It has not been defined. Secondly, please let me finish. Secondly, the issue is there's a gentleman called uh, Kevin Ebbs had sex with a lady called Joanna Watson in 1992. They agreed to have sex. In the midst of the act, she was consent. Because, here's the issue, consent must be present and continuous. Now, you mean you have to keep checking with the person you're having sex with, <laughs> am I still in consent? On white one, am I still in consent? So she removed that consent at about five minutes when he was just about to experience this very ex interesting thrill. The man, of course, did not stop. Biologically, it is impossible for the man to stop just like that. He went on another 30 seconds and she took him to police and he was subsequently charged and imprisoned for four years. This is what the judge said. He says, this woman accepted, consented to have sex with you the first five minutes, but the last 30 seconds she did not. The man's life was destroyed. Now, when you bring this issue into a marriage, marriage experience, people who have problems with men, women who have problems with men, will consent to have sex and then in the we'll midst draw. of the act they will withdraw and they say oh, oh it is causing me psychological they trauma they it is stress or oh, oh, what and you cannot measure these things how do you measure psychological stress look the language of lovers or is a very complex language the way men ask women when to have sex now these people are bursting into the bedroom of the embassy uh, Kuru, okay? How people can, men can even quarrel with the woman. You hear them in the bedroom quarreling and they have sex and they quarrel that night. In the morning they are laughing. Now, if this bill goes ahead, it will create where that woman will take the man to prison and marriages will end. How do you imprison a husband for five years? That is a marriage breaker. And this men are rapists. They rape women when they have just had children. I want to tell you this is a lot of anecdotal stuff. I've had my sister Miriam Matembe. She must repent and apologize to all of us men. She's giving us a bad reputation. After this man, this man woman has just given birth. And then she, he just comes in and breaks in. And it is like an animal. I demand this woman, this feminist, to stop masquerading and creating hatred of gender. And I want to tell my friend Miriam Matembe to stop. There is not a single study that has been done in Mulago or even these other people, all of them are giving anecdotal evidence. We must not stop this nonsense of creating hostility between husband and wives so as to pass this bill. You can I see that the if, if there is no, no we are yes. If there is no study on this issue of marital rape, let all of them shut up. Otherwise, they are causing this bad reputation and image of men. We are very passionate. Why isn't he listening? Is you know he's not going to not not listen. He's there a study. He's there a study that has been done in the public. Which one? Show it. I don't know what the study is. Everybody, but I have a man. Not a certain man. When the women are all anecdotal things, and I don't want to discuss on anecdotal people. And sometimes women can become very emotional. You hear these matemes. No, the man. They just behind you. Nothing like that. I am hearing this. Please, man. Stop. Stop. I mean, no, of course I'm not. If we have to discuss, let us be civil. Eh?
point is taken. But I would wish to ask. Recently, there was a member of parliament who went on television and said, why do these women, after giving birth, actually, it deserves them right when their men jump onto them after childbirth because they should be going back to their homes, their mothers and what? Senga's homes. That's an MP. That is a member of parliament went to school. who said that because these men, what do you expect to what do you expect but when you, you go in a man's home, in a man's bed? And true, the people have been challenging us, including Martin. I saw you on television in Parliament mm -hmm. trying to question: Is there inverse? Whatever you have said here, yes, on for me, I'm on saying consent. yes. We have had instances yes. of women who, after childbirth, are rushed back to Mulago and stitched, they and they are there. Right. And you know, because women, we don't talk about our private parts. You know, I can be raped, and I will just suffer with you my suffer. own no, men, and this is why we need uh, a to to say, no, you you should this is why we need to say, no man should marry a woman until they have been prepared. No man should marry a woman until they know how to handle her. Let's but let's no, no, we can't bring this criminal to you. Let's you let's let's some let's bad advice to men who are not well educated. Let's hear from the listeners. This is Spectrum Radio. And our number is 0414 It gets really hot in here, Stevie. 031 Yes, your name. Good evening, your name. My name is Dr. Yes, Dr. Tumina. I want to... Can you switch off your radio and then talk to us, doctor? Yes, I want to
Inspector Amala. Yes. Yes, your name again? Yes, Jeffrey. Yes. Some other questions that came in. Uh, Sir Paul Comack had said, if Parliament has failed, let the public decide through a referendum. Another question from Sarah Choi. The law should be passed, but after amendments, because it lacks many things like protection of children. Somebody else asked, if we punish sex without consent, then why don't we punish unreasonable denial of sex? So, you can respond. I can respond. Some of the people who have tried to divert the whole debate on the bill have kept on saying the children are not considered. But there is already an act of parliament which considers children's rights in even a marriage. You, so you can't just dump them like that. Children born in a marriage are entitled to property of their parents. At, uh, There's a certain percentage. There is a percentage. Yes. And even in case of inheritance, succession. So the, then uh, I, I keep on getting amused at uh, the passion with which the men are getting this bill. Yes. One, okay. Does but it threaten you? Even if the, no, actually it doesn't. Actually, I say the men out there should be threatened. Sure. Because uh, an, a silent woman to me is very dangerous. I would want to hear the views of the women. Not the views of Sheila. Not the views of Miriam Atembe. Maybe. These, they have had them so much. But the and views people, of Naka and Jaco. Uh, those the women who get so bitter hmm, that a pastor is not listening to me or my priest is not listening to my agony and decides to slaughter my son. 
We have to go. I want also to say my my Twitter is Martin Semper at Martin Semper. There is a lot of is get in touch with me. We need to agree together. The feminists, let's get together. You come and we sit together with the theology. Person of the Uganda Women's Network. Thank you for coming. 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 Thank you of sunlight to in one washing powders for sensational cleaning and all day fragrance. 